My dear brothers and sisters, aloha. aloha. For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country, who called his own servants and, to, and delivered unto them his goods. And unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to every man according to his several ability, and straightway took his journey. And he that had received the five talents went and traded with, same, traded with the same and made them other five talents. Matthew chapter 25, verses 14 through 16. These verses are so fitting for this lovely, most talented woman who will be speaking to us today. Growing up as the two babies of the Kanahele clan, my sister and I have always been very close. She has shed many tears over me, not necessarily out of love for my well-being, but more out of frustration for having to do all of my chores when I simply decided not to. I'm proud to say, though, that today I am a changed woman, and I do all my own chores, and then some. Growing up in our home, our home was always filled with music. As a very young child, I would sit on the top of our upright Wurlitzer piano and sing, while our eldest sister, Janiel, played some of our favorite tunes. Um, I'd like to just give some time now to our nephew, uh, Brayden, who is uh, the youngest son of our sister, Janiel, to uh, say a few words before I um, continue. Brothers and sisters, aloha. I'm just here to bodyguard Auntie Tina. But when um, when Auntie Joe asked to introduce, uh, I thought she said March, but I guess it's in February. <laughs> but you know, I, first thing I thought of honestly was lunch. <laughs> but. You know, I, I, it's an honor. This devotional is like the Super Bowl of BYU Hawaii. <laughs> you know, we get to meet with the president. and But to come here and say a few words, to be asked by Auntie Jolene um, on my behalf. Auntie Jolene comes from a family of six siblings, including herself. My mom, Janiel is the oldest, and Tilani Snow next. Um, Joseph Jr., we call him Uncle Juni. Then we have Uncle Keenan. Sorry, Uncle, if you're watching. Um, then it's Joe, then uh, baby sister and Tina. And Tijo has that special relationship with each and every one of us. And I feel my comments today is coming from a nephew's perspective. In my particular family, I am the favorite. <laughs> I'm sorry if I'm, I'm up here. But <laughs> when mom passed away in 2008, Um, Auntie Jo lived with us our whole life. We had time to prepare for mom's absence. And we also had time to accept that we will be leaning heavily on Auntie Jo for that mother figure. Auntie Jo was born and raised in Laie, a Laie girl fight with a Laia girl heart. As her nephew, I represent all my siblings and my cousins, as I'm honored to come and uh, introduce, as well as be a part of this wonderful program uh, we have for you today. Thank you, Brayden. Okay. 
So as the years went by, and as Janiel married and left our home, Jolene became my, my pianist. Again, the years went by, and I left home. And this extremely talented sister of mine continued on to accomplish great and wonderful things. She is the music director of Musical Truth, the extremely talented photographer known as Joe Photography. She's an entrepreneur specializing in mag lashes to makeup removers and bracelets, among many other things. And her latest, um, her latest, I guess, entrepreneurship is uh, making rolls for any of, for those of you who have been so privileged to uh, get it when the hot light was on. In keeping with the, the theme of today's talk, um, I just want to focus on a couple things for each topic, service, humility, and harmony. My sister, uh, with Musical Truth, they not only did performances for firesides and stuff like that, but she always thought of others. Her, her greatest joy was to provide music to those who needed healing, who needed comfort. And she often took her group into old folks' homes, to families who had just lost a loved one or are losing a loved one, anything to help uplift. As far as humility, many, many, many of her acts of love and kindness go unseen. She is that humble person who will never admit to a lot of the things, that, a lot of the good that she actually does. And then as far as harmony, in our family, she is, um, she's the glue. She has become the glue. She keeps all of us siblings together and close, even though we're um, spread out all over the place. And she always makes sure that everyone is taken care of. She, cre she creates harmony, whether musically or personally, as a friend, as a sister, as an employee, as a daughter. I am so grateful to this wonderful sister of mine who who displays these Christ-like attributes on a daily basis. And as I opened with the scripture in Matthew, I know that our Heavenly Father will, done, will one day say, as he greets her again, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. It is my greatest honor and privilege to introduce to you this woman of whom, I'm, whom I am blessed to call my sister, Jolene Kanaeli. I make fun of people who ugly cry. My dear brothers and sisters, aloha. I've always dreamed of speaking in devotional, said no one ever. <laughs> President Tanner must have had a strong prompting to call the wicked to repentance because here I am. 
I want to thank my baby sister and my nephew for their creative introductions. <laughs> my sister and I, she said we're the two youngest of six siblings and we're the closest, but we're seven years apart. Tina is a mother of seven and grandmother of four. And I always tell her she's my idol. She should have been older than me. <laughs> she's such a great example to me. And my, my nephew, Brayden Sika, AKA, if you call his phone and he doesn't answer, be easy. That's what you hear. He's a full time employee of BYU and is a part of the facilities management team, which was probably said earlier. Brayden is the youngest son of our oldest sister, Janelle. She's the most talented one, but she passed away in 2008. Brayden is my baby. When my sister was pregnant with him, I went with her to every checkup. I was there for his birth, and I even got to name him. Had the doctor allowed me, I would have been happy to deliver him myself. <laughs> Brayden is now a father of four and is married to his high school sweetheart, Cora, and I know she's in the front somewhere. I wanted as many family members to take part in today's devotional. So thank you to my nephews, Herbert and Kail, as well as my new niece, Anya, for graciously accepting the invitation to offer the prayers and the spiritual thought. I also would like to thank my nephew, Kavehi, and Malosi Teo. You'll hear from them later. I'm grateful to my musical truth, Ohana, for taking the time out of their already busy schedules to support me today. Before I even considered taking on this assignment, I basically told them, I didn't ask. I told them to take time off from work, call in dead if they had to, assist me, to assist me, because without them, without my family, and without my Heavenly Father, I knew I, couldn't, I, knew I wouldn't have been able to accomplish on my own a task of this caliber. At first I thought, Okay, five minutes talk, 25, music, 25 minutes of music, boom, I'm done. I did make it a matter of prayer, and in our conversation, I presented my plan only for Heavenly Father to say, negative, that's way too comfortable for you. Speak on something you need to work on. I hesitate, of, co of course, because whatever I speak on, I'll be held accountable, and to top it off, I'll have to do it. So I hope your mind clouds, uh, kind of clouds after this so you won't remember anything I said. Nonetheless, under the direction of the big kahuna, I shall proceed. So my message today is based on three very basic elements. To me, these elements are necessities for life as we all embark on our joyful journey. Service. Today I wish to honor and pay tribute to the two most influential individuals in my life. This is my parents. Okay, how many of us have LuLaRoe clothes on today? I looked at this picture. This picture was taken back in the 80s. So look at my mom's print, my dad's pattern. My parents were rocking LuLaRoe before LuLaRoe was rocking LuLaRoe. And behold, I tell you these things, that ye may learn wisdom, that ye may learn that when you're in the service of your fellow beings, you're only in the service of your God. Mosiah 2, 17. We all know that it's much easier to love, to serve those we like. Although I grew up in a home with two of the best examples of service, I'll be totally honest. I struggled to serve those I didn't really like. I grew up in a home where we had chores, and yes, I cried many a day over my little sister. And there was no such thing as allowance. Chores in our home were a get-to-do task. Since our parents provided us with food and shelter, we got to do the dishes, clean the house, do laundry, fold clothes, clean the yard, etc. We seriously believed that our mom would lay awake at night thinking of things for us to do. 
Those of you who know my mom, you know I'm on point. As both parents had to work to make ends meet, our fun family outings were considered our allowance. If you really think about it, chores are a service to our parents. It is showing gratitude for their hard work and sleepless nights in seeing that we are all well taken care of. We don't have to serve, we get to serve. I remember coming home quite a few times only to see a stranger or two sitting at the dinner table. I was the one in the family that if I didn't know you, you would get my stink eye. So these so-called strangers were often BYU students, just like you, Caucasian, Samoan, Hawaiian, you name it, who came here for school, their housing fell through, so they didn't have a place to stay. My mom, who was a secretary for what was called, what was then called, the education division here at BYU Hawaii, which is where I work now, would come across these students when they came through her office. They would start conversing, and before they knew it, she was taking them under her wings. My mother was very nice until you took advantage of her. She was not an, an enabler. These students would be welcome in our home, but she also made it very clear that they had two weeks to find a job and a place to live. And once that happened, they needed to be on their way. Now my dad would often buy lunch or dinner for a random stranger or anonymously pay for a random family's meal at a restaurant. In addition to the already large bill he had to foot for us, it was second nature for our parents to do random acts of kindness my siblings and I have witnessed our parents serving and touching the lives of so many. Although our parents have passed away, I will be forever grateful for the great legacy they left for my brothers and sisters and I to cherish and pattern our lives after. Albert Schweitzer once told a graduating class, and I hope you all remember this, I don't know where you're going or what you will do, but let me tell you simply this, unless you set aside some portion of your lives to serve those less fortunate than yourselves, you will really not be happy. Now let us move on to humility. Back in the late 80s, early 90s, I was living in Salt Lake City, Utah. I had a full-time job in Orem, working for a dear friend, Jerry Jackman, who was an LDS music publisher. I was having car trouble one morning and asked my roommate to drop me off at the bus stop at Temple Square, which she was glad to do. I quickly put my shoes on, hurried to the car. She dropped me off by a curb on the corner of North Temple. I thanked her for the ride, opened the passenger door. When I stepped out of the car onto the dew-kissed blades of grass, my shoes had sunk a little in the moist, mushy ground because it had rained the night before. We both said our goodbyes. She offered to pick me up at the same corner that evening, and I was very grateful. I walked a few feet to the bus stop, and the only available seat was next to a homeless man whose countenance was, whose countenance was all but appealing. I, it appeared to me that he hadn't combed his hair for weeks. Hmm, see if I comb my hair. And he looked like he had been at a bath for quite a while. When I approached him, he smiled at me and nodded a quiet hello. I smiled back and quickly sat down. A few seconds later, I could smell a very disgusting odor. It smelled like dog poop. And my thoughts on the stench was directed towards the homeless man. I kept looking at him and he kept smiling. I then started to scoot in the opposite direction as to avoid the smell. However, I noticed that moving away didn't do the trick. So I kept staring at him. I stare people down, just so you know. I kept staring at him in disgust and he continued to smile. I was getting kind of irritated until I saw him looking down at the trail of dog poop on the concrete walkway that led directly to me. I looked down at my shoes and had a flashback to when I stepped out of the car and to what I thought was mud, but I was wrong. I was so wrong and extremely humbled. 
I looked back at the homeless man and quietly said, I'm sorry. He again smiled, nodded his head in complete forgiveness. I quickly ran across the street to the water fountain. That was when I could run. And washed away the stench of shame. Shortly after the bus had arrived, I searched for my now homeless friend, but he was nowhere to be seen. I believe that Heavenly Father places souls in our path to remind us that we are all in the same boat, regardless of our color, our financial status, whether we have a shelter over our heads or not. We all need each other, especially when life stinks. I was so quick to judge that morning, but just as quickly, I was forgiven by this humble soul. And now we're on to the conclusion of the three points that I was compelled by Heavenly Father to share with you today, and that is harmony. Okay, everyone, repeat after me. I is kind. I is, kind. I is, smart. I is smart. I is important. Now turn to your neighbor and give each other a high five. Okay. February 10th marks my 27th year here as an employee at BYU Hawaii. If you're wondering how old I am, I'm 53, okay? So you don't have to do the math. For the past seven years, I worked as the administrative assistant, or I still work there, in the School of Education, currently known as Teacher Education Programs. And before I continue, let me give a shout out to my work, Ohana. You know who you are. All of you which have made and continue to make my work experiences fun and enlightening. I've been through a handful of presidents and vice presidents. I've been through quite a few academic calendars and program changes. I've seen both good and not so good occurrences involving change. Nonetheless, in time, I've learned to embrace it. One of my many pet peeves, and I'm sure some of you can relate, is when pedestrians take their sweet time on the crosswalk, texting, chatting on their phone. So I sit in the car, rolling my eyes, that's what I'm known for, rolling my eyes, and saying, really people? I find myself revving the engine, thinking not so good thoughts. <laughs> Honor code alert. <laughs> My heart starts to race and I'm sitting there imagining myself, just like in the movies, following through on my negative thoughts. One day, I made a choice to be patient. And if you know me well, you'll know it takes a miracle. On that morning, I prayed to Heavenly Father, and literally asked for more patience. Bad idea. I have never in my life encountered so many challenges in one day. I was tested to the hilt on the very virtue I had prayed for. I could only imagine Heavenly Father shaking his head, saying, you asked for it, girl. Regardless of the challenges, on this particular day, I decided that no matter what, I was going to be nice. I was going to pardon others' faults, blah, blah, blah. I also made a choice to be patient while waiting at the crosswalk for God's children to cross the street as they texted and chatted on their phones. As I sat there watching and consciously making an effort to be empathetic and compassionate, believe me, it took every fiber of my being, I noticed my heart wasn't racing and I felt calm. Things were okay. When we remove our expectations of how our brothers and sisters should be, everything changes. When we choose to sing the harmony melody, we choose to let God be the maestro of our symphony. We choose to make our opus his. 
As my sister said, we grew up in a home filled with music. Both my parents, both our parents played musical instruments by ear. I believe we play by ear because my mom used to do this all the time. <laughs> and those gifts were passed on to us. Growing up in our household, my siblings and I recall lying in bed at night in complete silence. Then all of a sudden, we start to hear the strumming of ukulele and guitar coming from the living room. Then only seconds later to hear our mom and dad singing the original version of the Hawaiian wedding song and other melodic tunes that we have come to treasure. Our father always encouraged us to share our talents and our mother also encouraged us to share our talents or else. In a few moments, okay, in a few moments, we're all gonna be one gigantic choir. So you're gonna be singing a song with us. We join musical tr my musical truth ohana in singing a couple simple arrangements of familiar hymns and primary songs. We will also be favored by two original compositions, one of them being a song composed by my niece, Kaoisika, who passed away in 2009 at the age of 29. And Kaui is Brayden's older sister. The song is titled To You From Me, which she had written for a friend's mission farewell a few years back. Our goal, this very moment, is to become one, even if it's just for a few minutes. It is important for each of us to know that our Heavenly Father loves us. And for some of us in this room, who may be going through difficulty and challenges more than others, may you find peace in Christ. May you receive answers to your prayers through the musical messages you will be singing and listening to. Allow him to speak to your heart and calm you. Be still and know that God is working behind the scenes this very moment, tending to your spiritual, emotional, and temporal needs. He sees our path far better and clearer than we do. You cannot go wrong by putting your full trust in he who created you. It is my prayer that the words that are sung today will help us to all improve ourselves, to be kind to others, to love, to forgive, and most important, to strengthen our relationship with our Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, even our elder brother, Jesus Christ. Harmony is the only melody we should sing. When hearts become one, it gives a heavenly ring. Attitude for good or attitude for bad will sing a song happy or sing a song sad. We all love tunes that invigorates the soul, and when parts are sung well, our soul's on a roll. Practice makes perfect is a popular hit. It takes a lifetime to learn, but persistence never quits. In God's ensemble, everyone's a star, and if you insist on flying solo, you won't get very far. Harmony is oneness and requires some drilling, but once it is sung, the melody is thrilling.
as a young child I've learned to be honest and true to the things I believe in my heart even when this old world is cruel yes I learned to precious things of the Savior and endure to the end. As I strive to took a while for me to finally see that I'm leaving my family behind to serve in a land unfamiliar to me the thought of it goes not unkind I'll stand as a witness and speak of
We are extremely fortunate in this day and time to have the gospel in its fullness, to have the guidance needed to succeed in all aspects. I hope that each of you will leave this devotional knowing that you're somebody, knowing that you matter to your creator. May we all continue to strive to serve each other freely and willingly, be humble and submissive to the spirit, be in harmony one with another despite our differences, and most important, to live worthy of the blessings we so deserve. Now once again, repeat after me. I is kind, I is smart, I is important. And mo the most important phrase of all, I am a child of God. In the sacred name of Jesus Christ, amen.